100 days of hardcore Minecraft in the Industrial Revolution and a climate apocalypse. We're going to be using the most popular crafting add-on mod for Minecraft, Immersive Engineering. But as we destroy the environment, it will fight back. And every 10 days, the world around us will spawn deadly tornadoes, winter blizzards, and finally, if we pollute the environment too much, there could even be natural disasters like volcanoes. With a ton of other fun mods, like Pam's Harvest Craft for better farming, roguelike dungeons for a better map, and serene seasons, so we have to work around all the changing seasons. This mod pack is not only one that's fun to watch, but it's also one that's really fun to play. So if you want to join me in the Industrial Revolution, you can find the link for the mod pack in the description. I'll try to walk us through each modded thing I do, so you can have some fun and learn how to play immersive engineering. That means not only can you laugh at how bad I am at Minecraft, but you can also laugh at how bad I am as a teacher. So you're welcome. Oh, and I know it's the 19th century, so we should have some big band music or something like that, but come on now. I'm doing 80 synthwave and lo-fi. Now, let's get big brain and start this industrial revolution. Oh boy, day one, jumping in to in dusty. And we're getting pooped out into a dark oak biome. And what a beautiful biome it is. Peaceful, beautiful, unspoiled by man. Okay, let's start destroying it. Now, whenever I play Minecraft, or any survival game for that matter, I always try to spend a good amount of time looking for a solid starting area. This start is no different. We're going to try and find something strong, like a village, hopefully. In the meantime, I do start out with some flint to get my pre-crafting table tools. So we get a flint hatchet, and then we start to punch these rocks, because I want to prove I'm brain and brawn. We turn these rocks into cobble, and then into our pick, so no more pre-crafting table silliness. This sheep mocks me for not being able to punch down a tree like Steve in Vanilla Minecraft, so I decide to punch him down instead. In his last act of defiance, the sheep farts out our first little cloud of methane, but we're going to get into pollution a whole lot more later on. Not content with just killing animals, I start destroying the landscape by mining out coal. Mining coal does release carbon dioxide, and it looks like the environment is already pretty upset with my reckless behavior because the first storm is starting to build up. The Weather 2 mod has a lot of different storms with negative effects that can make Minecraft a real challenge. Uh, but this first little storm is kind of just a warning shot from Mother Nature. It has some mild wind and you can already see these rain visual effects. It lowers our visibility and it makes the mobs really hard to see. So I do rush to bed and go to sleep. Day 2 and the harsh thunderstorm has blown my eardrums and temporarily deafened me. Whoa, so immersive. Okay, no, just kidding. I had some audio issues, so unfortunately, I had to cut that sound out. But hey, that just means more lo-fi for us. So the storm does pass. Now I keep exploring the custom world-generated structures. Speaking of world-generated structures, I find this creepy tower in the swamp and I carefully poke my head inside. I do find some steel leggings, which is good. And then I find a spider spawner, which is bad. And I bravely run away. I find a river, and I follow it through this forest, because I'm still trying to find the ocean and explore like a proper captain. And look at this crew. Sure enough, I find what looks like a large building. It's time to investigate. Nice. It's a larger village with custom houses and an engineer's workshop to help us get started. There's also a church here so we can pray to our Lord and Savior, me. And now you can all go full simp mode for the captain. There's also a train station, which has some decent stuff like a bunch of different wood, as well as this hidden chest, which has a set of iron gear. So we're looking pretty good on day two already. Over by the engineer's workshop, I find this, a wooden storage crate. This is the real reason you want to find a village when you play immersive engineering. Wooden storage crates are pretty much like a discount shulker chest or backpack 
You can normally get two or three of them for free. So this village has already got us looking good in the early game. Of course, I head to the biggest house on the hill and I make it my own. Set down a bed and get my potatoes. Life is good. Down on the first floor, I see some furnaces, so why not craft up some iron, right? Well, the reason this is a bad idea is because smelting anything can make carbon dioxide pollution. And now it's all trapped down here inside the building. Now after sleeping, I don't really think too much of that pollution though. And I head out to see that there's this quarry here in the village, which is good to get our mining started. So I grab some iron to make tools, and then I head back to cook this up as well. Then, as I go into the first floor, I see this pooled up cloud of smoke, which first off gives you debuffs like mining fatigue. And with more pollution, I could get nausea, I could get poisoned, and even get wither. And if there's too much pollution, there can even be an explosion. Yeah, let's not do that on day three. I set my furnaces outside for now so that they can vent freely into the sky. Now furnaces in this mod pack don't stack iron in the output slot, so we're going to need to get a bunch of hoppers right off the bat. I'm not complaining though, it's the industrial revolution. We should have a ton of hoppers and more effective ways of using our furnaces anyway. Now the industry is cool and all, but if you guys watch any of my other videos, you already know what my true love is, the thing I really simp for. That's right, it's time to start farming. And the first thing we should get growing is some hemp, so we can get a good head. Start on making industrial hemp. Now remember, this mod pack has serene seasons on. This means we need to plant our crops around the seasons and find out which season we're in currently. So now I'm gonna pick a crop from each season and see which one grows to find out what season it is. For now, I'm gonna save up all my crops in one of the wooden crates. And once we know what season it is, we can start to plan our recipes and work on our nutrition. You didn't come here just to see me get nice and fat. This isn't Nikocado, after all. Thank God for that. You came here to watch some immersive engineering. And the first machine in this mod pack that you should always get is a coke furnace. Why is it called a coke furnace? I do not know. Maybe the guy who made this mod pack had a substance abuse problem. Maybe this mod pack is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know and I don't judge. But I do know that now that I'm thinking about it, I'm kind of thirsty for some soda. And I'm thirsty for some clay because we need a ton of it if we want to make that Coke furnace. Once you craft up at least 27 Coke furnace bricks, you can start to set them down in a super simple 3x3x3 three by three by three big cube. Then you need to craft up, or in my case, borrow the engineer's hammer from your engineer's workshop because you're gonna use it as a tool for almost everything in this mod pack. You then right click it on the coke furnace and boom. The coke furnace in fact is so useful, I'm making a second furnace because these things will turn your coal into coal coke, which burns for twice as long as normal coal, doubling your coal for free. Maybe more importantly, it produces creosote oil. Day six, and while all my industry is pumping along, I head down and do some mining. In my personal opinion, I always think that mining is kind of a boring part of all these 100 day videos. So I'm gonna be skipping most of that footage. What I'm not gonna be skipping is turning my coal into coal blocks, then throwing those into our coke furnaces so we can start our journey into the industrial revolution. I'm pretty hyped for that. But I'm also pretty hyped about this. We got ourselves a bell pepper, which is a summer crop, which means it's summertime. Now we can start to plant our farm and our meal plants around growing summer crops. Luckily, good old vanilla wheat seeds grow in summer and in autumn, so we can use it for animals. So I'm getting an easy break to start off here. Next, we'll plant the only thing that makes me cry harder than watching Iron Man at the end of Endgame, and that's onions. Then we're gonna grab some of the wheat that was growing in the village. And yes, I do have some bread that I found in the village, but you cannot just craft wheat into bread like you can in vanilla. It's not that easy. It's gonna take a bit more work and special Pam's Harvest Craft tools to do that. Oh, wow. 
Um, the pollution is starting to make a little cloud up there. Uh, I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. For now, I'm spending today working on getting my food situation all worked out. You might have noticed all of these special bushes. They're from Pam's Harvest Craft, and they help give you the crops that we want to grow. And if you guys do decide you want to try out Pam's Harvest Craft, the best way to really get to the next tier of recipes is to use both animal products and produce in the same recipes. Don't tell Vegan Teacher I said that, by the way. I don't need that smoke. And, speaking of I don't need that smoke, day eight, and this creeper takes me straight down to half a heart. Also, it turns out, creeper explosions make a ton of pollution. Great, exactly what I needed. Luckily, by the grace of Mojang, these chickens didn't die, so now I can get them home. Now, I just have to throw it in a basic little chicken pen. Soon, we get these two little lovebirds, and I mean, well, technically, they're actual lovebirds. I then use some basic bricks, and I make a skillet which will help us make some protein-rich fried eggs. Or maybe something even better. Speaking of lovebirds, I wake up with a bunch of villagers in my bed, an engineer, and a doctor. Whew, wow, Captain did get lucky. But my luck might be running out, because the pollution cloud is really starting to grow and spread all over the village. I head back over to the farm, and I grab some eggs, onions, and bell peppers, and make an omelet. And like, legit, just thinking about a bell pepper omelet? Man, this has me hungry. Like seriously, even as I'm recording this. In fact, uh, hold on, I'm gonna be right back, guys. Okay, and I'm back. Hey, what's the point of having some snacks if you don't have the munchies? Harvesting grown hemp gives you more seeds. Kind of like how growing vanilla Minecraft weed works. I mean wheat, wheat, I said wheat. Um. <clears throat> we then head down to the quarry, and then we start to head back up when I notice two things. One, the pollution is getting pretty thick, and two, the wind. It's gonna be day 10 tomorrow, and this pollution means that we're gonna get our very first tornado. Unfortunately, I'm kind of starting off on the wrong foot here. Getting rid of this grass and replacing it with stone means the pollution is going to get even worse. I didn't know this at the time, but carbon dioxide can be absorbed by the grass, and it kind of works like bone meal in the grass. I guess that makes sense. I mean, plants do need carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, but I'm not sure that grass and plants would thrive in highly processed chemical clouds of climate-altering megatoxins. But hey, we all got our kinks. So I foolishly continue to add more stone flooring and remove more grass that could be saving our lives. Don't get me wrong, I love aesthetics, and I'm gonna be making a huge factory for sure, but I know I really need to prioritize function over fashion, and well, this just ain't it, Chief. Day 11, and I know what you're thinking. Captain, well, you got a title card, and a fade-in, and everything, and it said that there was gonna be a storm on day 10. And you're right. But the weather patterns in this game take a long time to spawn and move all the way towards us. So it could take anywhere from a day or two. But in the meantime, the rain has started. And the big one, it's coming. And halfway through the day, the rain really starts to come down hard. And it's starting to get hard to see. But just barely through the rain, I see the storm cell. It's coming from the inland and it's headed right for us. This storm is gonna be strong enough to knock out our farm, if it gets close enough. I wanna grab up all the crops, and I need to stay here and guard this farm with my life. If things get too scary, I'm gonna pull up all the crops and try to keep them safe so we can rebuild in the aftermath. I mean, look at this thing. It's hovering right over the mountains. Uh, yep, I'm scared, I'll admit it. I'm gonna pull up all the crops after all. I'm gonna try to hide them in one of my crates until the storm clears. And by the way, guys, I'm aware that these storms, they bring a ton of lag, and I am sorry for that. At least you guys aren't that cheap right there. Ooh, you did. And the worst lag spikes come when you get right in the middle of the storm where we are here. It starts to move the most blocks, and it causes the most particle effects, so it gets really rough. And oh boy, does this storm move a lot of blocks. An F5 tornado mostly just moves grass and leaves, but 
they still rip up a ton of the landscape here. You can see every one of these empty blocks that has this red border, that's a block that has been ripped up by the storm and thrown somewhere else across the map. And just like that, I'm being thrown all over the map too. I normally end up thrown in a tree somewhere in the forest and... Oh, I think I just saw that sheep fall right there next to us. And, uh, oof. Oh man, look up in the sky. It looks like there's a whole herd of sheep. That's not fun. Luckily, falling into the lakes keeps me from being pulled farther up into the storm. I'm trying to swim my way back out of the eye of the storm and stop this thing from pulling me back in again and again as much as I can. Finally, I make it home, and I have to deal with a little bit more lag, but the good news is, the next day, apparently, the storm cleared out my ears, because I can hear now. Or, you know, I also restarted my computer. So now there's no more lag, and the sound is back. Wow, it only took me 12 days to figure that out. Oh well, someday I'll be a real YouTuber. Until then, let's check in on our coke furnaces. Now, we have a ton of coal coke and some creosote oil. But honestly, after that storm, I really want to protect these machines. So I'm going to head out and grab some clay. And I'm going to start making some bricks for my factory. Lucky day 13. And the storms are bringing so much rain that these mobs are staying alive well into the daytime. Plus, my workspace here is out in the open in the field. It's really exposed and so exposed it's kind of embarrassing. Kind of like that first day of school when you show up and all the other kids are potty trained and you're still wearing diapers. What? No? That was just me? Oh. Oh, okay. Um, never mind. Anyway, so what are we talking about then? Oh, right, right. Repairing the farm. Speaking of embarrassed, I was a little bit too cautious. The farm, it turns out, it wasn't hit by the storm. I could have probably left all the crops growing, but that's really no big deal. Back at the furnaces, I'm getting a ton of bricks cooked up so I can finally get a decent building going. This storm might be annoying, but I gotta say, they do look pretty cool. And the sunset here, it's pretty beautiful. It takes all day to get a good amount of bricks going, but finally, on day 14, I get a small little wall surrounding this area where I wanna place all of my machines. I keep digging up the grass floor, and I start replacing it with a solid stone floor. I then head down into the mine, and I spend the rest of today getting an ore that I'm really going to need for the upcoming builds. Copper ore. And remember, this is 1.12, and copper isn't a part of vanilla Minecraft yet. And it still looks like this, and its uses are very, very different than vanilla. You know, like, it's actually useful. Cough, cough. Day 15, and the farm has fully recovered, so I decide to add on to it. I prioritize adding more hemp because our first big immersive engineering project is coming up and it's going to need it. I also see that I can make some cream corn with the onions and the corn. I just need to get a little bit of milk. So I start by throwing down a bunch of corn in place of the bell peppers and then I ask my chickens very, very nicely if they can transmutate into cows. I can tell they're trying their best but it's just no good. You can't milk these. As night falls, I quickly set out some torches around the factory, and with no rain coming for five days, I should be mob-free. Now that the mobs are off my back a little bit, I decide to stay up a bit tonight and try to turn my copper into some plates with an engineer's hammer. Then I can turn those plates into some copper wire. You do that using shears or wire cutters. These copper wires are used to make low-voltage coil which I'm going to need to connect all the things I want to power. And I can use them to make this a copper coil block. This is the central component of a lot of basic machines. For example, a heat exchanger. But before I explain what a heat exchanger does, I need to get a bit more copper. So on day 16, we're back down to working in the mines. I head back to the furnaces and I start to cook up what I've got, but I can tell we're going to need a ton of copper for all of our future projects. So, yeah, this is going to be the boring part of the video. Get it? Because, because I'm mining, so I'm boring? Okay, that was another bad pun, I admit it. You know what else is pretty bad? 
Going coal mining with no ventilation. When you're down here mining, all the carbon dioxide pollution tries to float upwards, but in these caves, it gets trapped in these pockets, and it can start to poison me. Then, I break my pick, so now I need to leave the mine, and luckily, I only have some dirt blocks, so I am going to be able to dig my way out. Even that might be hard to get through, because at the top of the tunnel, all the pollution has collected, and it's so thick, it starts to kill me. And I mean, look at all these debuffs. Poison, wither, and mining fatigue, which makes digging out really, really tough. I need to stay low and try not to breathe in all the pollution. Then, when I do get an opening, I need to rush out to fresh air. Ugh, smells like a middle school boy's locker room. Oof. I managed to get home, only to see that the pollution is getting bad back here too. But I have a plan to help with that. I just need to get that copper turned into some heat exchangers. I can make two right now, but I decide I'm going to make one more. You guys already know, but just in case you forgot, it's copper wires into low voltage wire. Then you get eight of those and you get it around iron into a copper coil block. Then we're just going to add some iron and some redstone and boom. The heat exchanger runs on power or RF. And if you place it so it's touching a furnace, it can cook your ore in that furnace as fast as a blast furnace and without using any coal. Now, we just need some power. First, we have to get some terracotta from our clay. All right there, Mr. Villager. I'm gonna go mining. You can take care of all this, right? I trust you, buddy. You got this. He's gonna blow this place up for sure. In the meantime, I use my speech 100 to get these mobs to turn on one another. And after a whole nother day of mining, I have enough copper to make some low voltage connectors. These are basically like power outlets that you connect to all of your machines, but we're gonna work on all that tomorrow. Okay, well, now it's tomorrow. So we place a connector on each of the heat exchangers so that we can plug them in. But where will we wire them? Well, what about a windmill? A windmill is made out of treated wood, and this is where our creosote oil comes into play. Creosote oil is used to make treated wood. This is an important component in a lot of really basic immersive builds. But I run out of wood, so it's time to go to destroy the forest, just like a true industrialist. Oh, but don't tell Mr. Beast about this one. Soon, with some more creosote oil, we can make a bunch of treated wood planks. And then you can make treated wood sticks, just like you'd make normal sticks. We then take those and we can make a single windmill blade. To make a whole windmill head, you have to have a total of eight windmill blades. So it's a good thing we started making all that creosote oil really early. Pretty soon, we have enough blades to make a whole windmill. And now it's time to get some power, boys. Okay, well, first, we need to get some windmill sails, which are made out of tough fabric, which is made out of industrial hemp. It takes a lot of hemp. And, again, almost like I planned this whole thing out, we've already started growing some hemp. We can start working on making a ton of tough fabric right away. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Oh, we only have enough hemp to make one sail, and we still need to get seven more? Okay, maybe it's not all coming together. Well, at the very least, we can start to set up the tower where we're going to mount the windmill. I'm going to start building the tower out of iron because this is much harder to get ripped up in a storm. And it should be much safer. My Ankies, on the other hand, those are broken for sure. And speaking of mounting the windmill, no, not, not that kind of mounting. Like, I mean, placing the windmill. <sighs> Come on, guys. We need to place the windmill on a kinetic dynamo. This is a component that a lot of your power producing machines will be centered around. Just like the heat exchanger, this is made around a copper coil. We spend the rest of today getting even more copper, and I think I'm gonna need to find some kind of way to make all this mining easier, or more efficient, or something to help us out here. At this point, I've spent like 80% of my playthrough down here in the mines, but at least we did find some diamonds. Oh, okay, and my pick just broke. Eh, okay, we we're being teased by these diamonds, but just like any time you're being teased and put in the friend zone, you just need to go and get yourself an iron pick. Soon, you'll have your 
happily ever after with those diamonds. Disclaimer, the captain can legally not give you any dating advice. Results may vary. Please do not use an iron pick to try to get a girlfriend. You're probably better off just being friends. Speaking of giving horrible advice, don't take my advice about staying up at night. All of my villagers have been turned into zombie villagers. That one right there is holding the door that it ripped open to get to its victims, and for Minecraft, that's pretty metal. On day 20, feel the lag return. That can only mean one thing. I step outside, and I see the rain. Sure enough, my fears are confirmed. We've got another storm headed right for us. I make a quick diamond pick and a quick diamond sword, and then I make a beeline for the farm. I'm going to pick up all the crops, and I hope I don't need to cut them down this time. As I'm working, I look up, and I see the storm front moving in, and whoa, I also see that huge pollution cloud. Ah, looks like my bathroom after a night at Taco Bell, or as I like to call it, toxic smell. I'm trying to figure out what kind of recipes I want when I can hear the thunder in the background. Now I know the storm is here. I head back to the factory, where I saw the storm front coming in from, and yep, there it is. I can clearly see the storm cell whirling just off in the distance. I take a look at this thing, and it's huge. It takes up an entire side of my base. But I get a quick idea. Storms means lots of wind, right? And lots of wind in a windmill Big power time, my dudes. Eh? I craft up the dynamo, and I stare this bad boy down. Now it's moving pretty slowly, and I'm hoping I can get the dynamo set up before this thing hits, uh, but I think, come on now. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we all know where this is going, so let's just cut to the end. Not only did I not finish in time, it turns out that the storm came directly to the field I was working in. Massive chunks of blocks are being thrown straight up into the eye of the storm, including that cow. Oof. Uh, I mean, including me, even. By the way, are you guys glad I've got the audio working? Listen to this super loud storm right in your ears. Doesn't this sound just great? I really do think the Weather 2 mod might be the loudest Minecraft mod. The rain effects are intense, and I can't really see everything that's going on. But I think the storm did miss the factory. But seriously, it's only like 20 blocks away. If the next storm comes in and it does the same amount of damage, but instead it goes over all the machines, whew, don't even want to think about it. I see that swirling over the mountains again, and I think that this one misses us for the most part. But I mean, honestly, look at this thing. It is huge. This is only an F4 tornado too. They get much, much more powerful, and they're going to do a ton more damage. And I don't mean to like break the fourth wall here or anything, break the tension, but hats off to the guy who made this mod. I really do think this is the best looking weather mod in Minecraft. And I would really love to have storms like this all the time, at, you know, if they weren't trying to kill me. I couldn't see or hear this creeper until it blew up right in my face. That might be the worst part about the storms. Well, okay, there's there's a lot of worse parts about the storms, but I still really shouldn't be out at night during a storm. The next day, the factory is stinky and wet, and when I head out to see the direct path of the storm, I see just how much of the land has been moved. It's basically carved a small trench out of the ground. I mean, look at this. There's more red out here than my cheeks when someone tells me I have a soothing voice in the comments. You guys... Stop it. And, speaking of a rosy shade of red, I can now see that the trees are really starting to turn. And I'm reminded that soon, winter will be upon us. I want to go and buy an almond, so that I can make almond milk. I don't have any more emeralds to actually buy the almond. I'm going to go through the village, and look for a villager to trade with. And, uh, oh, okay. No one in this house. Or this house. Uh-oh. With all these storms and all these mobs at night, it looks like the village has been turned into a ghost town. Much like my high school love life, I sadly find myself desperate and alone. 
This means I'll have to get milk the old-fashioned way, and find myself a milkman, and marry him instead. But before I do that, I should probably set up a little prison to get ready for him. I mean, <clears throat> a warm, inviting home ready for him. See, this is why I'm still single. On day 23, I'm back on the prowl. But instead of a milkman, I find this cow. Now, I just need to scour the earth, looking far and wide for one more cow. Oh, well, there it is. That was easy. I bring them home, and I start to feed them some wheat. And soon, we get ourselves a little brown chicken brown cow. And speaking of brown cow, this little one here still has some hope in his eyes. And he tries to make a break for it. Come on now. You gotta be quicker than that. We're finally gonna get to start to see the results of all of this hard work. I power grow some corn. Then we get a mixing bowl. I start to get some milk from the cows. And in Pam's Harvest Craft, every time you milk a cow, you get eight fresh milk, so that's nice. Then you throw the milk into a mixing bowl for some heavy cream. And now we can finally get our next dish. So we take a saucepan, then we add our corn, we add our stinky boys, and then we add some cream. And then we add some cr Captain, it's right there in the bottom. Thank you. Okay, there we go. We add some cream and get creamed corn. A perfect autumn dish which gives us both dairy and veggies. Looking at our nutrition, it's about time we start working on dairy and veggies too. Also, we have an unlimited amount of eggs, so pretty quickly we can turn them into fried eggs for some protein, bro. Then we get some water, and we grab some wheat. Then, on day 24, we get a mortar and pestle so we can grind that wheat into flour. Like, like a lot of flour. Then, we use a pot and we can turn some of that water into salt. Then mix the rest of the water with the salt, then you throw in the flour, before you know it, we've got some dough. The dough then just needs some bakeware, but it's an instant cook, and we get our bread. This takes care of our grains. And with those wild berries taking care of our fruit, we now have all of our nutrition completely balanced. The only thing we really need to do now is store away some of the food. So hopefully we can stay nutritious throughout the winter. Did I, did I, did I say that right? I want to stay nutritious? I think if I'm nutritious, that means that eating me is good for you. Ah, well, you know what I mean. I'm going to have plenty of snacks and I'm going to be a little snack too. I get the flint and steel and I light the nether portal. Then a quick trip to the nether so we can start to make some steel. So in order to get steel, you need a blast furnace which is made out of magma cream. This is the reason we had to go to the nether. I'm just gonna go looking for another fortress, but I don't really see one right away. Okay, that's fine. I'm sure I'll find one right away. Okay, not yet, but we'll just keep on searching around today and I'm sure we'll find one right away. Okay, so we'll spend another day. Yeah, that was not right away. It's been a few days and about a thousand blocks, but we do find this fortress, and we find a magma cube soon after. So it's worth it, kinda. After spending way too much time waiting for magma cubes to spawn, I finally go all the way back home, and at this point I almost die of boredom, and well, I almost die of, uh, of dying. But finally, we make it home. The first thing I make from all of my nether treasures is a season compass, because I want to be able to know exactly when winter is coming. Then the next thing I want to do is make a blast furnace. Now, while you're watching this, before you treat this video like a tutorial on how to play immersive craft, I gotta tell you, just, just stop right here. Do not do what I'm doing right now. See this? This is a railcraft blast furnace. It's not the right thing. In fact, it's even more expensive. Now luckily, I spent so much time in the nether that I've got a ton of blaze rods, which is the actual thing you need to craft an immersive engineering blast furnace. Yeah, that's right, I'm lying about needing the magma cream. But it's, it's not because I'm a liar or a bad person, it, it's just because I'm an idiot. However, I'm a lucky idiot because I still ended up being able to craft this sexy blast furnace. And that means on day 29, I'm gonna start to make some steel. It just takes iron and a lot of coal. 
If only we had a super powerful and efficient form of colon. Oh, that's right. Coke coal coming in clutch, my dudes. Now we just need to wait for that to cook. And soon, we're going to be a bunch of sexy steel sailors. In the meantime, I am going to head out and I'm going to grab some more copper so we can finally finish that windmill. Maybe even get started on our next project. I mean, why not? What's going to stop us, right? A massive tornado? Oh. Oh, I forgot about the massive tornadoes. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. Why do I always end up trying to make these machines right when a natural disaster is coming? Okay, I know a storm is about to hit, but this part is kind of important. Every machine in immersive engineering has inputs and outputs. The heat exchanger has this output, which is an orange dot. Next, we're going to need some sheet metal, but I don't want to be doing that at night, so first, let's go to bed. On day 31, we make some more treated wood, and with that, we make some treated fences. Now, this part of immersive engineering is really special. You can craft multi-block machines. This first one we're going to do is pretty basic. It takes four wooden fence posts in the corners of a 3x3 three three area. Then, we add our iron sheet metal in a four-high column on top of the post, with an inside being hollow. We hit it with the hammer, and with the magic words, hoopity doopity, smells like poopity, we have ourselves a fluid tank. Now we need to craft up a fluid pump, which is a basic recipe, and it just takes some iron plates. It's not too crazy. What is starting to get a little crazy is, is this weather. I kind of need to hurry up here. By default, a fluid pump has an input on the bottom, so placing it on top of this furnace will pump fluids out of it. Then, we connect the pump to the tank using some fluid pipes. Oh, oh dear. This is, um, wow. This storm is coming towards us really fast. It kind of looks like, oh no. It's going straight for the factory. These machines are super exposed. Ugh. Oh, this could get ugly. I run to the farm, and I start to pull up all the crops right away. This storm is too big, and I'm not messing around with this. Plus... I really need to be over at the factory to see if I can chase down any of the blocks that get ripped up and fly off of the machines. Oh, I totally forgot about the animals. This could really reset the playthrough if we get really unlucky here. So I start to head back to the factory. And sure enough, it's now coming right through the village. I, I don't like the look of this. I craft up a few boats, and I can keep the cows inside them to stop them from flying away. Look at this thing. Ooh, this is bad. This is really bad. I try and place the boats in the driving rain. And luckily, I managed to get our first two Moo Moo's in. Now, I get the second boat down, and I try to get the rest of the cows in. Good. They're all safe. Oh, oh, okay. Except for this little one here. Well, good luck, little guy. As I start to head back to the factory, I get pulled back into town over the church. And this means that the center of the storm is right over the factory floor. I get thrown into the air, and finally, here it is. On day 31, I see that my luck has run out. I'm up in the air, and I get a bird's eye view, and I see a ton of blocks are being ripped out of my factory floor. Now, it's not a question of if we lost some progress. It's just a question of how much. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get back down there and recover the items. Because the storm is so strong, it's thrown me all the way up above this pollution cloud. I try to fight my way over to the farm to see if it's hit here yet. Yep, chunks of dirt have been thrown around. If there were still crops growing here, they would have been totally destroyed. I look over, and luckily, the little boat exploit slash cheese, it's kept our cows safe. And what's better is, even in this harsh rain, I can see that some of the chickens are still here. I head to bed because I want it to be light so that I can see all the pieces that have been ripped out of my base. Day 32 and well, let's see how mad Captain's going to be today. My chests have been destroyed and items have been thrown all over the factory floor. I can see the pieces of my blast furnace have been broken too. I'm trying to collect what I can before these items start to despawn. Even though I'm collecting items all over the place, I know for a fact that I have lost some of my loot. 
Now I lost some of these blast furnaces, but I still have one left. And the tank and the coke furnaces are all okay too. So, I mean, it could have been much, much worse, I guess. I decide to replace the missing floor with some stone. Also, I do decide to place down some stone slabs in the walking areas. Remember, the storm can only beat us down if we give up. And I'm not giving up. In fact, I'm still making sure this place looks good and is functional. Day 33, and it's time to see how the farm looks. Turns out, I wasn't as lucky as I thought I was at first. The storm ripped up some of the fences, and most of those chickens are running all over my base now. I did keep my cows though, so again, it could have been worse here too. The farm itself needs a lot of love though. And since we're already going to be working on this all of today, I decide to add on to the farm and I double its size again. We add a whole patch for our corn, and a whole patch for our onions, and I then decide that after these devastating storms, I might need something to help me relax. So I get two whole patches of farmland set up with hemp. Day 34 and the pens still need some love. I get them all closed up again, but the chickens have all escaped, so I need to start throwing some of my eggs. Ooh, look, a golden chicken. Look, an another. They're all golden chickens. Oh, I, I just realized these are all baby chicks and all chicks start out yellow. Okay, well, now I feel kind of dumb and I'm thinking maybe we don't need all that hemp after all. By the end of the day, we have all of our repairs done. It's time to push forward and finally get working on that windmill. We have all of our sails ready, time to get powered up. I set the kinetic dynamo pretty high in the sky. So the higher up in the Y coordinate you set your windmill, the more power it will produce. But more importantly, the more power sails you have added will double the power. So I quickly add all of those. Wow, not too bad. One look at this beauty and I totally forget about all the headaches that those storms have been causing us. That night, I still need a bit more copper, so I run back down to the mines. We do really need to find a way to make our ores more efficient. Hint, hint. But then the next day, as I'm heading back home on day 35, I see it. The lake is freezing over. It's finally winter. As I head back home, I use the iron I've collected to finish the fluid pipes. And now, we just need to make sure that the pipe has this orange dot. That means it's the output. Then we throw this lever on the pump and all of this creosote oil is being pumped into the storage tank. You can kinda just barely see a little yellow line on the meter. That's all our creosote oil. And it's also how much more room we have for more oil. Then I work on getting another pump set on this furnace and making sure that the pipes are outputs and they're all correct. You see that full oil bar? Now you see it, now you don't. This means that we don't have to worry about these furnaces filling with oil and stopping. They should be able to make us stacks of coke coal and we can keep all of our oil in this big tanky boy too. It's looking pretty good, but we're only just getting started. Time to climb back up into the sky and start to connect our windmill to all of our machines. Now, some of you more ambitious builders are probably thinking, why not just make this windmill all the way up at the top build limit. Well, the reason is because you still need to connect them all the way down to your machines using copper wire. And copper wire can only extend about 16 blocks. So that means we need to make a relay every 16 blocks to connect another copper wire. Oh, and okay, as you can clearly see, they also can't be obstructed like mine is. And there we go. By making these power lines with relays on top, we can run these copper wires from the windmill all the way back down to our machines. The 16 block length limit of the copper wire results in a connection chain that looks like old school power lines. Plus, I'm also trying to go for aesthetics here, obviously. The end result is that this is looking pretty good. My Ankies, on the other hand, not looking so good. But that's just the average day in the life of an electrician. Soon, we have all the relays in place, and we can start to connect the relays with multiple connectors to the machines. You can already see that this first heat exchanger is starting to get power. And soon, we throw something into the furnace, and the heat exchanger bursts to life. Now, we're cooking faster than a vanilla furnace 
and we're doing it with no coal, only wind power. Automated furnaces are definitely one of my favorite parts of any crafting style add-on mods, and this right here, this makes me so, so happy. Just remember, if you want these to work, you need to have this orange dot facing the side where you're connecting your LV connector. Connectors can only connect to one thing at a time, but a relay can split the connection to multiple machines, like the power lines do. As the sun sets, I can't help but feel pretty happy to see this whole thing working. And this is only the super bare bones industry. We still have so much more to come. However, on day 37, my high gets cut a little short here because, uh, oh yeah, it's winter. Did you guys remember that? I totally forgot. I set up these little covers over the water so that it won't turn into ice. Now these could be ripped up in a storm, but these are really only temporary. I then look over my crops and I consider fixing this side, but I, I mean, no crops grow in winter anyway, so what's the point? So I harvest up what crops I have so far. And now, I just need to rely on keeping all of my animals safe. If I run out of food, oof, knock on wood. But hey, I've prepared pretty well. I have a good amount of food, and I can store all of these crops in the wooden crates, and I should be good till spring. I hope. The hemp, on the other hand, grows all year round. You could even say it grows like weeds. Okay, nothing? No? All right, I'll take the L on that one. So with no crops growing, my animals are now much, much more important. And after that last storm wrought havoc on these poor things, I'm gonna start working on a little coop to keep them safe. Now, first of all, it is starting to look pretty cute. I mean, look at them, so cozy. But also, I'm really just hoping that the animals won't fly away and the roof will hold them in place. Even if it does take a little bit of damage, I don't think it's going to be ripped clean off, uh, right? Just as I start to plant some more hemp, I see it. Our first snow. Now it's not a blizzard or anything just yet, but this does mean that things are going to get a little bit harder. In fact, well, you'll see. Day 38, and as I start to see the snow pile up on the machines, I start to think. In only two days, there's going to be another storm. I cannot afford to have another setback. And I can't just have these machines exposed like this. So I start to cook up some more clay for bricks. And, and while I'm doing this, I notice something. I'm getting mining fatigue. The pollution, all of a sudden, is starting to get really bad. Huh. I think maybe I can make some more clean energy windmills to help with the pollution. But that's probably something I should work on after the storm. For now, I gotta get some bricks cooked up so I can start to work on getting some walls for the factory. I'm doing good, but this is taking too long and the factory is pretty big. So I'm gonna need to cannibalize the train station and try to get a few more bricks and rush the factory. Day 39 and I have a cheap, quick way to make a roof. And it uses a new modded block and it's pretty cool looking. So we get some of these sheet metal slices and start to lay a thin layer on top of the factory. The good news is, this is actually looking pretty cool. I didn't plan to use this, but now I'm hooked on it. And I start to cover the whole warehouse, kind of like we're setting up a new Costco. Uh, does that joke play? Do my international viewers know what Costco is? It's like a big, soulless, really cheap Chinese stuff. You could buy like a thousand rolls of toilet paper for 17 cents. Bad news is, we did not finish the roof when the first winter storm hits. Not even close. Honestly, I'm in full panic mode here. If you ever, ever see me using raw cobblestone in a build like this, you know it's hit the fan. I have completely lost my cool. I'm not even trying to make this look good anymore. I don't even really know if the storm can break cobble, but at this point, anything is better than taking another hit like the last storm. Now I think we're gonna get a bit of luck here. The storm I saw in the morning was a weird fluke. 
it disappeared, so now we still have about a day or two before the real storm comes in. Also, we have some not-so-luck, because the pollution is really getting dangerous. With all of this mining fatigue, I can barely work in here, and I know that sealing in all the machines will only hold all the chemicals, and it will build up even more. But I don't really have a choice. I need something to cover my butt. Then, after finding all that underground brick and coming back up, we do in fact get our next storm coming in. The weather is getting really bad. The fumes are getting really bad. Now I know what you're all thinking. The inside of this room must really smell like fart. And it does, but don't worry. As soon as we see the pollution cloud outside, we can confirm that the whole map, in fact, smells like farts. The storm is coming to help carry that smell all across the world. Now, I think the only thing that's really in danger is the hemp here. So I grabbed all of this up, and it should be pretty easy to replant this. But seriously, I don't understand how this pollution cloud is so bad. I mean, look, most of the chemicals are here inside of the plant. This storm is super powerful and super strong. Luckily, it's headed over to the forest and I think it's gonna miss us by a long way. So I'm gonna head back to the farm and replant. Uh, wait, really? Is that a second storm in the distance? I guess this is what I get for ruining the environment. And yes, this one is headed right for the farm, the weak spot of the whole village. Once again, I'm trying to pack my cows into these boats and hoping these little coops keep my chickens safe. Oh man, this one's big. After sleeping and passing another day, the storm is still starting to hit. Don't worry, Moo Moo's and Cluck Clucks. I'll stay right here and make sure you're... Oh, oh, well, I guess... Well, I guess we're all dead. See you in heaven, everybody. Bye. Okay, I didn't literally mean I was going to come up to heaven here. And, okay, ouch. I think I just took an ice block to the face. And, oh, look, we're up here with this weird floating island, too. And now we're falling down and... Ooh, okay. I'm just glad that the storms don't let you take fall damage. I think that that's the farthest I've ever fallen in hardcore Minecraft. And it's ripping me up again. I really honestly can't even move. Finally, at one point, I just happened to get thrown in the water and I try to swim back to the farm. And it looks like harvesting all that hemp was a good play because check this out. I mean, the whole half of this farm has just been ripped out. This is so bad. The good news is, I think this one has passed, and the animals luckily are okay. I start to repair the farm, but, I mean, I don't need to fix the entire farm. Nothing really grows in winter anyway. Day 44, and even though I spent almost three days dealing with that storm, I didn't really lose that much. Now I have a new problem. I want to get a more permanent roof on the factory, but I clearly need to figure out a way to vent out all of this pollution. Eventually, I'm going to have to address the massive cloud of pollution up in the sky, too. Now that the animals are our only thing that are really going well, I kind of need to rely on them. Sadly, now I, I have to kill a cow or two because I need leather to make a leather cap. It's going to be part of a more important piece of gear, and I really am going to need this. A diamond respirator. This will absorb a ton of sulfur and carbon dioxide. Now I'll be able to work in the factory without any poisons or mining fatigues. Well, at least for 24 minutes. Day 45, and I don't want my factory to just be one big block of brick. I want to go get some more nether brick too. Remember, we can cook all of our nether rack in these furnaces for free. Whoa, that's a lot of pollution. If that all builds up too much, that could explode. All right, I've got my gear ready and I need to work with this pollution. It's time to clean up our factory here. I'm gonna start venting out all the carbon and sulfur. I took a small part of the cobble roof off and a geyser of toxic fumes starts to just gush out. Ugh, wow. Smells like, ugh, rotten fish and cabbage. Ooh, oh my gosh, is that, is that a porta potty from Coachella? Ooh, kind of smells like, Kinda of smells like a guy who plays League of Legends and doesn't leave his mom's basement for a whole weekend. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, did that last one hit too close to home? Okay, uh, we need oof, oh man, this is gross. We need to figure out some kind of chimney system. 
I decide I want to try out a mod pack called Advanced Chimneys. It works with the pollution mod, and it vents all the pollution out of the machines through the top. But also, we need an anvil. This is going to help us repair the respirator. And yes, so we're going to need that because this is getting bad. Okay, so we just need to connect a chimney to the top of every machine that produces pollution. We need to stack the chimneys up through the roof just like, well, I mean, just like a chimney. Now I'm putting down some dirt on the roof. This is why removing all the grass and replacing it with stone was so bad. And this is why making the factory itself is kind of a bad idea. But worst of all, this is why winter and the snow is so bad. The carbon dioxide, the biggest pollution we produce, is absorbed by the grass. And in winter, the grass is covered by snow, and we have no way to disperse all of the pollution. Even if I vent all of this pollution outside and try to make more grass, the cloud in the sky will still poison us from way up in the air, and the snow will still cover all the grass. Because of this, we're going to need to make sure we have a respirator ready at all times. And, I mean, I guess just plug our noses. The carbon will also be absorbed in the leaves of trees. We can use those leaves to repair the respirator. And then I find this villager just, um, just kind of roaming around. I try to capture him and take him into this cave using my boat. I then light him up with a bunch of torches and I seal him up. But yeah, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I kind of forgot about him as the playthrough goes on, so this is kind of his tomb, if we're being real. Then the rest of the day, we're just mining. This witch poisons me, but I mean, I live in a cloud of poison. I was born in the stinky, molded by it. Day 47, and since the winter is going to be super harsh with all the pollution, I'm going to spend a good chunk of my time just mining. I mean, it's basically like I'm playing Stardew Valley, and I'm just spending all the winter season down in the mines. Day 48, now the chimneys are working. And by working, I mean they're shooting even more pollution up into the sky. I do have one idea that could help us out here just a bit though. An iron filter will help capture some of the pollution before it gets up into the atmosphere. Simply place the filter on top of your chimney, and in just minutes, you'll have slightly less toxic air. Warning, this product is not FDA approved. Sadly, because the snow is also covering the trees, the carbon dioxide is not really getting absorbed into the leaves, and this just kind of looks silly being placed up on top of the roof. I'm going to go ahead and cut all the trees down. The good news is, I am making some more progress on getting my factory roof done. Just to lay out the kind of the idea of what I'm trying to do here, I'm making the whole roof tilted so that the fumes will all rise up to the very top point. Then, at the top of the roof, I'm going to make some vents that will let all the pollution vent out. This, combined with the chimneys, should keep the air inside the factory relatively safe. I still need some more nether brick, so we're headed back into HE double hockey sticks, but with only one day till the next storm, I'm not sure I'm going to have this whole roof done. I break this filter and, oh, 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 I've fallen to the chimney. Okay, kids, it's time to put out the fire. Santa's suffering through third degree burns. I'd give you guys coal for Christmas, but I'm afraid a polluting industrialist might actually enjoy that. Finally, the chimneys are all high enough to be poking out of the roof. And then I put the filters back on. Now, if you'd please take me to the burn ward. In the morning, I see that, much like all gamers, I'm still trying to get this bread when I hear the thunder of a new storm spawning. I repair my respirator and head out to grab some yellow flowers. I'm going to use these for yellow dye and make some yellow stained glass. I'm going to add the glass to the roof walls of the factory. This will give it a dirty old factory look. I know that some of this glass could get broken in the storms, but as long as the bricks hold, I'm not too worried about it. I spent all day 50 trying to get this roof up. This whole section of roof is over the part of the factory that currently has the machines. So even if there is part of the factory that's exposed, I haven't put anything here that the storm could possibly damage. And I can already see from the wind that this storm is going to be a big deal. 
I consider working on more of the roof, but there are two big problems. I want to keep as much of the factory covered by cobble as I can, and also, my power lines have been downed by this tree. It grew around my power lines, and now my furnaces, they just don't work. That might not be the biggest of our problems. Day 51, and I only have this last little spot over the coke furnaces that needs to be covered. Quickly get that done, just in time, because the storm is moving in today. This is kind of hard to see, but I think it's coming in just behind the church. But at the end of the day, I'm feeling pretty confident that this one missed us. So I start to take out all that cobble and work on the next section of the roof. And while I am working on the roof, I look out way beyond me and I can see that the storm is in fact moving away and we are safe. So now that we are completely safe and definitely not going to get sucked into the sky. Oh, oh, it, it appears I have committed the dumb. Yep. I have gone fully dumb indeed. Now I'm not sure where the storm is moving at all. I see that I have in fact been outplayed and the storm has somehow come all the way around to the front of the village and it's dumped a bunch of dirt and ice blocks and stuff all in the factory floor. And the pollution is also powering up all the mobs and making them much stronger. On day 52, I see that the storm did a full 180 and it's leaving the same way that it came in. So to celebrate not dying, even though I totally messed that up, I decided to go full Johnny Appleseed and I plant a bunch of apple trees that should be grown by springtime. Because I took all the cobble off the back here too, the storm really did mess this place up. There's a bunch of ice that's melted inside the factory. So now the floor is flooded. I've already been fooled once, so I want to be really sure that the storm is actually past this time so I can get started on fixing the power lines. I see that there are a ton of leaves, like actually chunks of leaves that have been blown onto the factory floor. But other than that, I think it's okay to start to rebuild. I climb up the windmill and start to reconnect it. One thing I have to say is I'm not really happy with how when my power lines go down, I'm kind of screwed. So I decide I'm going to make a backup battery or low voltage capacitor to store up some emergency energy for the next storm. Pretty basic materials to make this, just some copper, some lead, and some treated wood. Plug it in, and you can see it's starting to store up its 100,000 flux. Then we just have to connect another low voltage connector to a different side of the battery. And in this case, I'm just gonna run it to a relay in the middle of the factory. This way, I can split the power coming from the battery to multiple machines in the factory. Just make sure it's orange for the output. And let's start plugging everything in. Pretty quickly, I'm getting all these machines powered and looking good. And the wires aren't even gonna be in my way. And uh, uh, wait, is there another storm coming? Why are there so many storms? This storm is so big. I can't even tell where the center of it is. The whole village looks like it's getting hit. Here we go again. I get thrown down under this tree, where I'm just trying to eat some eggs and chill. Pretty soon, I'm getting pulled up again. And I mean, look at this. It's like it's covering the entire village all at once. How am I supposed to prepare for this? I got pulled up and then thrown all the way into the back of the factory. Like actually back inside the factory. Oh, this is so silly. So I'm trying to get all this work done in the middle of the end of the world. Huh, I really hope I get hazard pay for all this. I could check my heat exchangers, and they aren't getting as much power as I had hoped. So, in that case, if there's going to be a ton of wind blowing, why don't I make another two windmills? So I head out to find a spot, and then I set up the next iron pole, so that I can start to get this factory really pumping. We even have enough copper for the first time ever, and we make ourselves two copper coils, then two kinetic dynamos. So, I'm starting to set it up, and then wow, look at that sky. That's pretty bad. I almost kind of feel ashamed of that. I really need to focus on getting clean power more than coke coal. As I climb up, I start to set the wooden power lines on one side of me and the iron windmill stock on the other. Soon, I'm ready to place the dynamo, and then I creep on top of the dynamo and I place the windmill blades, but 
I can't put on the sails from this angle. So, I need to build my way to the front of the windmill. Then, sure enough, the blades pop right on. Oh, look at that. I guess the blades can't move if there's something blocking them. Well, that's kind of cool. Anyway, like I said, the sails go on perfectly. And if you're watching this and you're thinking, Captain, you missed one of the blades. Yeah, wait until I figure that out. So we get this wired down to the power lines, and then we get the power lines wired all the way back to the battery. But we aren't done here just yet. It's time to get a third windmill going. So then we get the power lines set up for that as well. We get all the way up the iron pole, and we get the third dynamo and the connector set. We get the windmill on and all the sails ready just as the sun starts to set. We plug this in, and then we plug it to its power lines. And then we run the power lines back to the battery as well. However, this still does need a little bit of work. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but the dynamos were actually facing the wrong way. They need to be turned the right direction so that the hole faces the blades, and that little orange dot is facing towards the connector. I also make sure I adjust the third dynamo as well. So now, this should be a great time to add that last sail to the middle windmill, but I still didn't see that yet. But after I've broken my legs and been electrocuted, all the windmills are linked to the batteries. Now the capacitor is filled up, and we should have a good amount of extra power for the future builds. So I head out front to admire my work and yep I can actually see the moment where I realize that the very middle windmill doesn't have one of its blades my OCD will not be okay with that so I have to climb all the way back up place the last windmill sail and then hate myself for being so dumb that I missed that in the first place finally at the end of day 54 I can stand out in front and look back on my work oh yeah I like this Put that on my Instagram. Hashtag biggest fan. Hey, come on now. I could have made a hashtag blow me joke, but I didn't do that, did I? And while I'm just looking around, messing around in my storage area, I hear running water. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's melting ice. That means it's spring. Springtime, boys. All the trees are bright green. All the ice blocks are melting, and the world is starting to thaw out. For now, I'm just gonna go out, I'm gonna grab some of those apples. A snake once told me, these things are delicious. And as the day goes on, some of these ice blocks are all starting to melt. But whether they're melting or not, I really gotta try to move these out of the way as quickly as I can before the whole village is flooded. I can tell this is gonna be a soggy spring. Day 56, I head back onto the roof and I see as soon as I cut down any of the grass, the carbon dioxide is immediately being absorbed. The sky is already looking better. And while the sky heals, I spend the rest of the day running around trying to clean up that extra ice. And I gotta say, there is a lot of extra ice melting everywhere. The storm really threw a ton of it all over the world. And then, of course, there's this. Man, the farmer inside of me is shedding one small tear for this nightmare. So I spend the rest of today just trying to get all of this farm set up and... Wait, why is this cow... Oh. Oh, dude. The animal pen is unrecognizable. Oh. Well, I know what I'm going to be working on tomorrow. To heal these wounds deep in my heart, I start to plant some potatoes. So... It's not all bad, but it is getting late, so maybe this can all wait. Day 57. And you know what I could use right now to heal my headache? He he he. Best crop number one. No, no, officer. I promise this is all for industrial reasons. Yeah, totally legit. Speaking of weeds everywhere, the entire village is covered in overgrown grasses. It's a bit annoying but it does mean that the air is much better for breathing now. What's not annoying is I scored another stinky boy. Remember what we learned from Shrek. 
Captains are like onions. They have layers. The sky is starting to look great. The only real cloud is the one that's sitting just over the factory itself. And yes, I know that grass on the roof like this looks kind of weird, but it's really, really helpful to keep us from choking on the stink. Now that we've cleaned up our act a little bit, it's time to really get into some more serious machines. This is an engineering manual, and it'll tell us how to build multi-block machines. The first of which will be the crusher. But of course, it's going to take a lot more mining, so I'm off like a dwarf. On day 58, I'm heading out. I want to explore this brand new springtime world when I come across this shattered savanna. While I'm here, I poke my head down this weird tunnel, which turns out to be an acacia railway. This is a world structure that spawns if you have rail crafts installed, which our mod pack does. It has a ton of cool stuff, and a ton of not cool stuff. For example, this cave spider spawner, which forces me to go hiding in this little cubby hole. But honestly, I do really like these world generated structures though. In fact, I stay out here for a whole day. In fact, I stay down here for a whole day. I'm down here for so long that I almost break my steel pick and get stuck. I have to craft up a quick iron pick just to find my way out of this massive chamber. And, oh no, look at this F1 tornado. It's got blue clouds. Wow, it's so dangerous that it turned blue. It's changed the color of the... Uh, oh, wait, nope. That was just because I was under the water. Okay, never mind. I'm rushing to get home before day 60 because I know that this next storm is going to be wild. The problem is the rain effects are so thick that I can barely see where I'm going. You know me. Normally, I love them thick. But this is getting to be just a little too much. As I start to get a little closer to home, I can just barely see, over the ocean, this massive tornado coming in. It's so dark and ominous. Okay, I've managed to get ahead of the storm, and I've run all the way home. I have never been so happy to see a cloud of pollution in my life. Speaking of pollution, the sky really does look a lot better, so maybe the storms will start to calm down. For now, I'm focused on our next big project, one that will take a lot of steel scaffolding. We then craft up a light engineering block, which only needs some copper and iron, and iron mechanical components, which again are just made out of copper and iron. We also get nine hoppers, and we get some steel fences, which are made just the same way you would make wooden fences. Then, we add this redstone engineering block, which is easy, and then this next part that's, well, it's not hard, it's just a little different. See, you need to follow the layout that's shown in the engineer's manual, and make sure that you place all the blocks in the correct pattern. The crusher isn't anything too crazy, you just really need to lay out these first two layers. Then, you need to put the nine hoppers up on the top. Then we just say the magic words, choke it on this gusher, give us a crusher. And this is our first real multi-block machine. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't super hyped. The crusher has tons of uses, but the main thing is it will take your raw ores and double them. I'm hooking up a breaker next to the connector so that we can cut the power since this thing will drain our batteries. Uh, um. Wait, did this thing just meep at me? Meep. What is that sound effect? Did somebody just say meep into their microphone and then throw that into this mod pack? Meep. Okay, that right there, that might be the highlight of immersive craft in my mind. Uh, but this next part, this is a close second. With everything hooked up, we should get double the iron from this ore. See, one ore makes two iron grit. So far, so good. Now we take that to the furnace, and it should turn each grit into one ingot. Sure enough, we now have a way to double, then smelt all of our ores with no coal needed. Now I have to admit, I was a bit excited here and I kind of went a little overboard with the conveyor belts. I made 48 and I, I really only needed like eight. I started to set this up and make some vertical belts to take the ores all the way up the side of the crusher. Soon, I made a conveyor system 
that take ores down from the ground level into the crusher teeth. And that's good, because you do not want to feed this thing by hand. This is how you lose your hand in a horrible industrial accident. This thing will kill you if you fall into it, and you can't jump out once you're in there. This thing is a lawsuit waiting to happen. But in the industrial age, lawsuits, much like clean air, are just a myth. So keep an eye on all your fingers and all your toes, and tell little Timmy not to get too close. Uh, t Timmy? Timmy? Ah well, I'm sure he'll turn up somewhere. In the meantime, I'm getting pretty excited about this thing, and testing out what I can and can't crush. Then I just throw in all of my ores, because why not? I even throw in this bo box, box tonight? Ugh, aluminum. And I don't even need aluminum. Or al aluminium. Then, by day 63, I'm getting to see another use for the crusher. I can then combine them into an alloy called Electrum, without even using an arc furnace. Throw that grit into a normal furnace, and boom. And that's good, because we're going to need Electrum for our next toy. We get some steel mechanical components, and some normal vanilla pistons, and then we combine that to get a heavy engineering block. These blocks are used for more advanced machines and tools. For example, we have Le Mining Drill, might be the best part of immersive craft. Well, for me at least. And now, we just need to drill head. Whoa. That's a lot of steel. O okay, I guess we're just going to be waiting on that. Throw that iron into the blast furnace and not worry about that until later. I guess I'll just waste some time here picking some flowers all night. After sleeping on it, I do realize what we should be doing in our downtime. The drill will need fuel. And step one of getting fuel is making an industrial squeezer. And no, that's not just something we call a clingy girlfriend. And I do understand where you're coming from. The squeezer is pretty basic, with a focus on needing these four wooden barrels, with a piston on top. The important part to remember here is that the piston has to be facing down into the barrels, or else this won't work. Say the magic words, your mama's a geezer, please give me a squeezer. Now, this bad boy is all the way across the factory floor, so it's a bit of a reach to get it all connected, but the center relay is still in range, so soon we have it all hooked to the power grid. Throw in some seeds, and boom, we get our very first plant oil. I throw in some wheat seeds, but they're hardly as useful as the real king of plant oil. You know them. You love them. That's right, it's hemp seeds coming in clutch again. Soon the oil meter is on the rise. But like I said, the drill can't run on pure seed oil alone. We need this next machine, which is really the star of the party. The distiller is very similar in build structure to the squeezer, but its focus is on the cauldrons with some sheet metal. Okay, say the magic words. Liver killer, liver killer, it's your boy the distiller. Plug this into the power grid as well, and now we just need some sugars to break down into ethanol. We start off with an apple, and we get ourselves some cider, but... I think we all really know where we're gonna go to get some real alcohol. Duh. Ivan says, Why eat potato when you can drink them? I throw these bad boys in, and now we're really boozing. But don't worry, I can stop anytime I want. I don't have a problem, you have a problem. Now those machines will all take some time to get some work done, so we might as well head across the seas. It's an all-day expedition, but soon we find a fresh cave system and we start the mining. So we're down here, mostly focusing on grabbing iron and copper, which are the main things we need to collect in Immersive Craft. And I cannot overstate how much of this stuff you need. But the good news is that with this crusher, this means that every time we grab an ore, it'll actually be double. So this should get a lot less grindy. Sure enough, by that night, we have a ton of grit ready for our furnaces. I start to set up the framework for our next big multi-block machine the refinery. It takes light engine blocks in the back with these heavy blocks here in the front. You run a fluid pipe down the middle, and then on each side you place two by two cubes of iron sheet metal. This factory floor is starting to get a little bit tight, but I managed to squeeze this one right in the back here. Okay, magic words time. Stop looking at my hinery and check out this refinery. You guys probably already figured out what we're going to be doing here. And if you haven't guessed already, 
We're going to fill up one of these tanks of the refinery with the hemp seed plant oil. Then we're going to head back over to the distiller and take Mother Russia's finest and fill the other tank of the refinery with the ethanol. And if you'd already figured that out before I said it, we're going to have a lot of success with this mod pack. Now I just need to plug it into the power grid. But I actually don't want to run more voltage through that one relay. So, on day 66, I start to set up a small set of power lines that will run some of the wires around the back of the refinery. Now I could just plug it in here, but I decide I'm really starting to use a lot of power. And I only have so many windmills. So I want to get another battery placed right here next to all these new machines. I plug that battery into the new power line system, and then I plug that battery into the refinery. This will hold some more power for us, and it should help us out for right now, but we should really start to think about getting more power sources in the future. For now, we get our first little bit of biodiesel, so it's time to ramp things up. I make myself a jerry can, which is just basically some iron plates and some buckets, and we can use this to move a ton of ethanol into the refinery. The jerry can lets us move 10 buckets all at once. So of course, I then take some plant oil as well, and soon we have a pretty good amount of biodiesel, which I can then throw back in the jerry can. And now, we've almost gotten to my one true dream, the real reason I wanted to play this mod pack. I craft up some treated wood, and I craft up some treated wooden fences and a crafting table. Put this all together, and it gets an engineer's workbench. Now enough time has passed, and we've gotten enough steel so that we can make a steel drill head. Now trust me, this is totally worth it. It's so much better than an iron drill head because it lasts so much longer. We take all of this over to the workbench. We can assemble the drill head onto the drill chassis. Then we can fill it up with fuel without using a crafting table or the workbench. But I'm not done just yet. We get some plant oil, and now we can craft up some advanced lubrication system. This lubrication is really going to come in handy on day 69. We add that to our drill, and this thing is really going to start to shine. Day 68, and I start to work on the next animal pen. We start by cutting down all the wood. The storms are going to be able to make quick work of any structures that we make out of wood. And with all the industry we have going now, we're going to be able to have plenty of iron coming down the pipeline. So I start to lay out our new metal animal pen. I head to bed, because tomorrow is, well, day 69. Nice. We start to set up some more of the animal pen. I set up some glass, so that the animals aren't just in an iron prison. I even start to set down some iron sheet metal supports. But I mean, come on now. You know what today is. We're all lubed up. And we take our drill out, and we start to get down and dirty. I spend all night 69 lubed up with the drill. Okay. Oh, this is too much. Okay, we get it. Day 69. Nice. Uh, this is Minecraft. Too much. Too much. But hey, speaking of getting too dirty, I quickly find out that if we mine coal in mass chunks with our drill, we get a big plume of pollution all at once. And the drill starts to seize up and die if you're inside of the pollution, even if you're wearing a respirator. But that's not going to stop me from drilling deep. <sighs> okay. Please, no more, guys. Make, let it stop. Just as day 71 starts, I head back to the surface. And hey, no storm at all. You would have thought that it would have come in on day 70, but the skies are clear. Wait, what's wrong with the church? Oh, no. There's been a massive sinkhole that opened right under the church. This thing is devastating. And yeah, sure, they may hit a smaller area than a tornado, but they completely wipe out whatever building is on top of them, no matter what materials you use to build it. Now, this could be a real problem. And this one is only a few blocks away from my house and the farms, and I mean, it's right next to the factory here. This almost feels like a sign from God here. I mean, the church isn't with us anymore biblical, really. But hey, might as well take this door. Wouldn't want to waste it. It's flooded, overgrown, and now the sinkhole is dragging it into the ground. Well, while the old buildings are falling apart, the new ones are really shaping up. But while I keep working, it's important to remember that from now on, 
we are always at all times in danger of getting another sinkhole in any random spot on the map. And unfortunately, there isn't really much I can do to try to save myself from this. I just have to try to collect as many resources as I can so that I can recover the next time we get hit. Day 72, and we're back up top filling the crusher. I know that nature might still be the biggest threat here, but I do really love all this man-made stuff in here. I decide to change my gear up for a full steel set because one, it's better than iron, and two, I really have no limit on the steel I can get. Also, we get this beauty. A normal shield with some extra steel reinforcement, and soon we got a sick looking steel riot shield. Day 73, and we have even more resources massing up in our crusher. Soon, we even get a little extra aluminum, and yes, I'm gonna call it aluminum because I'm a dumb American, deal with it. So with some aluminum scaffolding and some iron sheet metal, we're ready to get our animal pen all set up. So the supports on the corners are now aluminum, the walls now have glass to let some light in, and the center here is gonna have some sheet metal dividing it. Looking pretty good. Now, we just need to trick some chickens, I mean, invite some lucky friends to join us. Day 74, and we add some iron buttons onto the doors, and I'm gonna head in. The cows are looking pretty happy in their clean little pen, and now I'm stuck inside with them. Oh, thank God we have a button. Uh, I was worried there for a second. Then, the most important part. The roof must be made out of sheet metal. With this metal roof, these cows aren't getting sucked. Well, I mean, at least they won't get thrown up in the storms. Then, back in my factory, oh look, we have a new little employee. Now, I don't really know if I have any plans to help this guy, but I kind of feel bad just killing him, so... Boat boy number two it is. Then that night, we have enough iron, and we can finish up the little industrial era pen. The next morning, we just work out some details, and it's looking okay, but it could look better. So we add on a small overhang, and oh yeah, I'm liking that a lot. Okay, speaking of animals, we get some milk, and soon we have a quick stack. Then we get some water, and we put that in the pot and get some salt. Make the milk into cream in the mixing bowl. Add the cream to the salt in the saucepan, and look at this, butter boy incoming. We get a skillet and the potatoes, onions, and butter, we have potato cakes. Great for dairy and veggies. And of course, with those fried eggs from the chickens, we'll have our protein. Then that night, I think I remember, I have some golden lanterns from the Acacia Railroad. And so we add those to the pen, and now it's looking really good. Day 76, and the playthrough is almost over. And I guess I celebrate by poisoning myself with creosote oil. But then we start to pump out a bunch of treated wood. And we eat a lot because the next project is a bit overdue. We get ourselves four water wheel segments. Then we just need one piece of steel and we have a full water wheel. In fact, we have plenty of treated wood and steel. So let's make a second water wheel. Then we go all in. We take all of the copper that we farmed in the last 76 days so far, and we turn it into copper plates, which we then turn into copper wire. And then we turn all of that into low voltage coils. You might be able to tell what we're gonna be doing next here. We get a kinetic dynamo and we head to a waterfall out in the mountains. Now guys, honestly, pretty obvious, you can use iron buckets and you can make yourself a man-made waterfall right next to your machines for more power. And yes, you should 100% do that. It's much better, it's much easier, much more functional. However, I wanna make this water wheel in a natural waterfall just because I like the feeling of doing it the hard way. Call it role-playing if you want. I don't care, don't care. This is Minecraft. And if it's not fun, then we're not doing it right. I need to make some changes in the water flow to make things work more effectively. And it's a bit of a headache. A lot of cobblestone here, a lot of moving water sources there but I like this. The more flowing water that the wheel touches, the more power it gets. And this one has more than a semicircle of flowing water, which gives it a pretty solid amount of power. So we head back to the factory to manufacture six low voltage capacitors. I wanna hold as much power from the wheels as I can. 
We make some connectors and a lot. And yes, I mean a lot of relays. That's because I'm gonna need to run power to the factory, through the village center, over this cave opening, past the farmland and the animal pens, across this wide open field full of trees, past the river, and all the way into the mountainside where the capacitors will be held. Speaking of capacitors, we are now going to set up these capacitors on top of these poles so that we can more easily access each of the sides. We set the power in wires at the top of the cave, then we set all the power out wires connected to the bottom of this little mini power plant. But it's a lot of work, and it is going to take us another day. But by day 78, we have all the wires set up, and we can start to run them all out of the hydro power plant. Then, I start the long process of setting up the power line grid that will have to make that long trip all the way back into the city. I also want to set up multiple power lines so that they won't all get bottlenecked too bad. So we have a total of three wires on each pole with each wire connected to two separate batteries. And remember, the max distance that you run these wires is 16 blocks, so lots and lots of power lines are going to be needed. Also, we're going to need to clear out some trees to make way for the lines too. And can we just stop and talk about this? This feels so authentic. Like I feel like we're really setting up a power line system. It's a ton of work, but I love this. Ah yes, day 80. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and the earth is cracking wide open down the middle of the map. Wait a minute, the earth is cracking wide open down the middle of the map? The storms may have stopped, but now the natural disasters have completely replaced them. This earthquake has sliced the ground almost all the way down to bedrock right outside of my town. The fault line goes all the way down to the ocean, and stops me from getting over to my water wheel. It then destroys part of my hemp farm, and it looks like it even runs all the way up to the sinkhole by the church. It's actually fully cut me off from my hydro plant. Like, really? Okay, so now we need to fix this little earth boo-boo. And let's be honest, we could just throw a bunch of dirt over this and cross back and forth, or we could just move the water wheel to an artificial waterfall, like I said, next to the factory. And both of those ideas are really smart. Problem is, well, I'm not really smart, so I'm not doing either of those. I'm going to get started on our next industrial project, and I'm going to create a steel and aluminum modern bridge over an active fault line. I've been informed by a team of geologists that building directly across a fault line might be a bad idea, but come on, it looks so cool, right? We get our steel scaffolding laid across the width of the bottom level and then we bolt in the aluminum supports on the top level. Then, on day 81, we run some sheet metal across the path, and pretty soon we have an easy and awesome-looking industrial crossing just in time to let the zombie come across. We then place our steel support beams, reinforcing the length of the bridge, and then finish the far side with plenty of aluminum... Oh, oh, nope, we didn't get to finish. Oh, so, in a deep fit of depression, I jump off the bridge to commit not alive, and, oh, look, aluminum. Well, that's a convenient reason to live for. What's not convenient is how the relays look when they're put sideways like this. Kind of like robot nipples. I place a power line right next to the far side of the bridge, and I'm hoping I'll be able to reach all the way across the gap. I then try to hook up the wires, and I pray that I can be able to make it. And it was close. But as long as I place the power lines right on the edge of the fault line, it makes it. So I then spend the rest of tonight setting up even more power lines, every 15 blocks, and hooking up at least one of the wires just to make sure it actually does reach. And now I've made it all the way over the farmland and up to the open cave and right into the village center. Day 82, and I craft up some more wooden fences to finish the power line grid. I managed to make the power lines pretty simple so far, but I do need to make this corner turned here, so this power line's gonna look a little, um, a little kind of a goofy looking one. 
kind of like a triple nippled snake a spicy electric triple nipple snake but one that does work so i like it then we do turn awkwardly down the street it's kind of silly but again it works so i like it again then by day 83 we get right up to the back side of the factory now we just need to find a good way to run all these power lines into the factory i decide to make another three batteries so that the Hydra Dam will not have a really big bottleneck slowing it down. See, the thing is, the longer you run your wires, the more they'll lose power. So these long power lines might result in some low voltage. But if we get these batteries up top of the factory, they'll slowly charge up. So this really shouldn't be a problem. Now I'm just gonna spend some time fully wiring up each power line all the way back to the power plant. Ready for the grand tour? So we ran these wires, out of the power plant, past the river, across this open field, over an active fault line, then through the farmland, past the animal pen, over the open cave, straight down Main Street, left on Broadway, and right to the booty of the factory. Yay! Then, to keep my OCD from breaking my sanity, we do get a little bit more aluminum to finish up that bridge. And now, Captain is a very happy man. But I'm not quite done yet. The back side of the factory is still wide open, so I'm gonna grab some more nether rack from the nether. And I did run out of gas, but thanks to Jimmy the Juicy Jerry Can, I can easily refuel on site, and we can get right back to drilling. Throw that nether rack into the furnaces, which are now running on water power, and then we get rid of some of the pods that we just find all around. Yeah, gross. Day 86, and we finally have the back section of the factory ready to get some glass installed in this tall wall. I'm trying to figure out how I want the building to look, and then I figure out how to get the wires inside without ruining the look too much. Now, this back side of the factory looks pretty kick glass. Kick, kick glass like kick. Is that even a pun, or am I just having a stroke here? Now, on day 87, I have almost all the roof done too, and the plan is pretty simple. I'm keeping the top area open, in some parts, to vent out the toxins, but also I'll be able to run in the wires in the same gaps. So we stick some relays on the side walls, and then we can easily plug our wires into the batteries, where we can run the wires from the batteries to the machines, or the relays, if we need. So now I'm going to move to the other side. I'm going to try to make our windmill power lines more effective and less bottlenecked in the same way. Throw the relays on the walls, then run those into the batteries. Only on this side, I'm gonna run some of the wires into the batteries that are already placed all over the factory. Yeah, I'm gonna level with you. This is a bit complicated and weird looking, but trust me, every power source has at least one battery, as it should, and each machine only has to share with maybe one other machine. I'm not gonna just start running power through just a few wires and slow things down. Also, I'm not gonna forget to wear my respirator because, wow, I forgot how toxic this place really is. I mean, sure, it's not as bad as Twitch chat, but still, pretty deadly. So it took a bit more time and extra brain work, but I got each power source linked to a battery, so it's all good. What's not good is how these mobs are actually getting supercharged from the pollution, and even though I have pretty much endgame armor, they're still super annoying. So maybe it's time to go to bed and not die on day 89. Then we run back into the Hydro Dam and we add a third wheel. So, we have three windmills and three water wheels. Perfectly balanced, like all things should be. Ah uh, yes, looking good. Thanos would be proud. Now we just need to finish up the factory. Day 90 and everything seems just fine. Maybe all this clean power I'm using means the environment is finally not trying to kill me? I mean, these furnaces are still pretty dirty, but we don't need to talk about that. And the clouds above the factory are so toxic that they kill me in just a few seconds without my mask, but still, I'm fine. This factory really is starting to look sick, though. I really do love this mod pack, and I promise you guys, I think I might be doing another 100 days at the very least. And I'm actually going to go over here and see what's going on with all of this sulfur. Day 91, and I'm going to try to finish the back side of the factory. So it's three separate walls with a ton of glass inside. 
I might add some vents in this back part too if it needs it, but not just yet. Nice. The roof is all sealed, and the back wall has its vents so the machines can let all the toxins out. So the roof is all sealed, and the section of the roof that has all the machines that make toxins have vents over them on top of their chimneys. So this should keep it clean. Day 92, and we're getting some iron sheet metal to reinforce the building and keep it strong just in case another natural disaster strikes. Then we head down to do some mining, because look, I don't really need to do this, I just really like doing this. I've earned this little break, come on now. I start to put the iron in the fur... Wait, wait, this isn't what I do. I'm supposed to be using the crusher. Oh. Man, these fumes must really be getting to me. Now it's time to make my final defense against the natural disasters. That's right, of course, a revolver. Now, if there's any more earthquakes or sinkholes, I'll just blast them. Day 94, and now I'm trying to figure out how to make some bullets for this bad boy. I think I'm gonna need some blueprints, which sadly means I'm gonna need some paper. Out of all the things I've been making, the one thing I forgot was sugarcane. Wait, what is this? Oh, no, 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 no. I've seen this before. This isn't a normal sinkhole. I need to keep going, uh, working faster. As I go around, I'm finding more earthquakes and natural disasters, and I think my worst nightmare is about to come true. I stay out all day and all night looking for more sugarcane, and I end up back at the swamp and back at that old house that we found on day two. And even though I have better gear, I still have to deal with these cave spiders and hide away and... Man, I hate poison in Minecraft. Luckily, with my full nutrition stats, I recover a ton of extra health. On day 95, I head back to my base. And while walking past all of my creations and my builds, I find myself realizing just how powerless I am to protect everything from what's coming next. I make my blueprints, and I try to make some bullets, but... None of this is going to stop the natural disaster. Day 96, and I wake up to another massive sinkhole even closer to my base. And all this lag it only means one thing. And no, it's not because I clicked on that link about hot singles in my area. See how the plants and all the trees are broken? And how the ground is rising up? Yeah, that's right. A huge volcano is growing up out of the ground. And it's all centered around this. This is the caldera. And soon, it'll be filling up with lava. And from then on, it's only a matter of time. But, speaking of time, I really only have to last four more days. My factory is almost complete. I'm trying to work on it. And while the world around me is shaking and quaking and... Well, it's really just being super laggy. But soon... The sheet metal supports are all starting to come together. I want each of the walls to have its own sheet metal support, as well as each section of the roof up here being reinforced with metal as well. And while working on the factory, it's looking pretty good. I see over here that the volcano is looking pretty big now too. The whole base of the mountain is now huge and it's just right outside of town. I desperately try and clean up the environment but just like in the real world, I think it might be too little, too late, to fix climate change that's gotten this bad. I take a look at my factory, as well as the volcano. I might not make it to day 100, but after seeing how cool this whole thing looks when it's done, and after all the fun tools and the gear I've made, I'm glad I did this playthrough, no matter how it ends. Immersive engineering is so much fun. I love this industry. And I'll definitely be doing more playthroughs with this mod. On day 98, I'm gonna be real with you. I just took the drill and I went mining. I'm spending my last days doing what I love. But just like on the surface, the pollution gets the last laugh. I mine up a bunch of coal. And soon, all of this carbon dioxide explodes right in my face. If I didn't have full nutrition and my steel gear, oof. Finally, day 99, 
and I see through the windows of my factory that the tornadoes have returned. I've spent some time putting on the last few details of my factory, but honestly, I'm just trying to distract myself at this point. I clear out the dirt from on top of the factory. It doesn't matter what I do to try to fight the pollution. It is what it is. As the tornado descends, I take one last look at all of my work. My creation. I'm proud. Even if all of this is only temporary, it was a lot of fun. And soon, the tornado cuts my moment short, and I get pulled off the roof and in toward the volcano. It's fitting, really, that the tornado would team up with the volcanoes, and this would be how it all ends. I'm getting pulled up the mountainside, closer to the danger that awaits me at the very top. The lava, the fire, and the pollution from the erupting volcano, I don't even know what I could do to survive this. And the tornado throws me into the caldera. This is it. Wait, I landed on this really small ledge. I I I'm alive. I'm okay. The caldera isn't full of lava yet. And I've landed down in this cave where the storm can't pick me up. So does this mean I eat? I recover as much health as I can, but soon the lava is going to start to rise. But maybe I can get to safety before it erupts. I build my way up, and as soon as I get to the top, I'm not being pulled around. I did it. I lived through the last disaster. The volcano didn't erupt yet. And now it's almost day 100. The storm has passed. I can see it moving away in the distance and it can't kill me now. I stand on top of the mountain, and I look down. And yeah, there's plenty of destruction, but I'm still alive. And I just barely made it. Now, day 101 might not be okay, but hey, it's a 100-day challenge. And I made it. The Industrial Revolution is over. For now. <laughs>